you, like so many other performers, have other personal content platforms like Snapchat, mm-hmm. like OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're doing quite well. And many other performers have decided to stop working for mainstream companies, mm-hmm. only focus on their OnlyFans. Totally. You just signed a contract with browsers. Yeah, I did the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like doubling down. Hell right. yeah. <laughs> so what made you decide to do that in a world where you could survive on your own? You know, so many things. Uh, one, I'm super risk averse. Mm. Just as a person, I always like to think ahead, think about crazy worst case scenarios that'll probably never um, happen. So like, like falling into a well, like falling into a well, <laughs> breaking both night. ankles and then not having enough content for the next four years. Like, yeah, like crazy shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm only two years ahead. That'll never work. Like <laughs> crazy shit. Um, yeah. So what if, you know, like so many things, uh, like, let's just use OnlyFans as a really specific example. I've only had OnlyFans since the pandemic because I had extra time on my hands. I've been in porn 11 years, and I honestly feel like I make my money completely differently every year. Mm. And there's no reason for me to assume that that won't continue. I've seen that this is the pattern, and my brain tells me that you're going to continue to have to pivot every few years. The one thing that has been consistent is studio work. Mm -hmm. They've built my whole brand. They have traffic I could never afford. Um, They have eyeballs that I don't have on my billboards, billboards being my own social media and the traffic I can afford to buy. So I, I don't personally see the logic in quitting. You know, if I were burnt out and I didn't like it or I had never liked it and was just waiting for this opportunity, I can see the logic, you know, for any emotional reason. But financially, it doesn't make sense, not because I don't make way more money on all my platforms, but because I can't buy what they can buy me. Mm. You know, I can't I can't buy the I can't afford the exposure that they can buy me. I can't. I can't even afford the productions that they can provide for me. And as we all know, once you drop out of mainstream porn, all you're left with is the billboard you've created, your social media, which one can be taken away at any second. Yeah. And which we see all the time. Right. Porn stars, Instagram. Right. And you have to start over. So to me, this is this is my safe space. And I'm super happy to like branch out and bank money during the years that I'm able to bank money and squirrel it away, you know, for years when I might have to make my money in a less lucrative way. Mm -hmm. You know, at right now, I feel like the consistency are, are, are the companies. They, they built my brand. They created Cherie DeVille. They created every single one of my fans that I'm lucky enough to monetize off of. I know every other performer feels the opposite, but I, I, that is what I believe. Not that I didn't work really, really, really hard, but like, I don't know that I could have gone the completely independent route, just do Pornhub and create this 3 million follower Instagram without top companies making me me. Right. And that doesn't mean I think I owe them anything. I don't. I don't think I owe them anything. But I think it wouldn't be a good financial move for me to drop off. I think I would have a few years that I could kind of like grab onto those coattails, but it would dwindle. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to dwindle. I want to continue to grow. Do you feel that studios are treating talent differently these last few years? Because I can tell you just like from an insider producer's perspective, like there was a lot of meetings that I had over quarantine about the way that talent is treated. How can we improve the way that we treat talent? Um, how can we, you know, ensure a safe onset culture? Have you, have you noticed I'm that at all? I'm super glad that everyone's trying to make everything better and safer. I've definitely noticed that talent I'm the weirdest person ever. I've noticed that talent is treating companies shittier. <laughs> yes, there's like that. I'm. Yeah. I, I'll just say it, and I'm not some like company spokesperson. Like yeah. I work for myself. I'm I'm contracted, but you know, Cherie Deville brand is my most my my passion. It's right. my my bank account. But I'm not saying you have to work seven days a week. But if you call me and offer me a job, and I say yes. 
I've said yes. Yeah. I'm going to show up right. to that work. What I don't understand is people getting a few dollars in their pocket in a, and let's be honest, those dollars, OnlyFans specifically could go down at any moment. Yeah. I mean, we saw um, the rug almost get pulled out. We from know under that OnlyFans recently. has the network effect. And yes, we could all pivot to another platform that will not have the network effect that will not have all yeah. of us on it, on it. Instagram is Instagram because it's fucking name three of its competitors. You want to go on there and make money? Yeah. No, there's no fucking value. Yeah. You know, so eesh. drop out if you want to drop out. Quit porn if you want to quit porn. But doing what a lot of people are doing, which is not quitting and burning your bridges. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Quit and come back in two years. That's yeah. great. Yeah. But. And I'm going to say ladies because I see this more with the the ladies. Ladies, I don't care how much ma- money you are making. $200,000 a month, great. First of all, save it. You're only 20. Mm-hmm. You got to live till you're 105, right? Yeah. So maybe don't spend any of it. And I mean that literally. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't burn your bridges because a month from now, six months from now, five years from now, what if you, what if you need those companies again? Work yeah. once a month. Keep your commitments. Be kind and professional. Like, I'm not asking for you to kiss ass, but I, I'm concerned that a lot of people are going to really ruin their careers. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm totally wrong. No, I've seen that too. I've seen a lot of like, fuck you, mainstream fuck studios. You, I'm fuck making you money all. on my own. I'm it's making like- money on OnlyFans. And it's like, for your sake, I hope this lasts forever. But from what I've seen, in the past 11 years, that's very fucking unlikely. Yeah. It's never happened, but maybe this will be the one time and I'll just eat crow and be totally wrong. Or maybe this will be like everything else and end way sooner than we want it to. Yeah. I mean, I'm so with you on that. And I've been in the industry 23 years now Jeez. and I can tell you. So you've really, yeah. I've really seen the ups and the downs. Um, and, and you've probably seen stuff like where someone's like, fuck you, I'm quitting. I'm the yeah. best shit. I've got this now. And, and then, then they're they like, come like crawling back quietly. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Like I don't put yourself in that position. I made $3 million, but I spent it all on rent and this great car and I have nothing. And it turns out I... Yeah, I can't get another job and I have to live on sex work till I'm 90 and I didn't save anything. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the other thing, unless we're all different humans, unless as a woman, specifically because the men can go on to other things more easily and maybe the stigma will change so that we can too. Women in porn save your money. You probably have to live on this money for the rest of your life. If you are living paycheck to paycheck, making what's really an absurd amount of money, because we make an absurd amount of money, even I don't care where you are on the spectrum. You know what I mean? Save it, save it, save it, live small. Mm -hmm. Who cares if someone comes to your house and they're like, oh, I thought you were popular. Don't you have? No, I don't have nicer shit than this. Yes, this is my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a savings account, so it's it. Yeah, you know, it's so this makes so much more sense when you're older. When it's young, it's when you're young, it's so hard to like not, you know, want to spend it on everything. I just remember like you know how when I was young, like I remember I went through this whole thing where. I decided that I was just going to like buy all these designer handbags. Like they're still sitting in my closet. They're totally worthless. I spent so much money on them. Like what the fuck was I thinking? Like wanting a nice car. And, and now I'm just like, it's, yeah, it's all about just having money set aside for the what if, because like, if you don't have a safety net, it's not even a what if. Most of us are not going to be physically able to work when we're 70, 80, or 90. Yeah. And like our government's not going to take care of us. So, yeah. 